Hello guys. Something slightly different. I want to tell you how to get better at golf. Or certainly explain my journey at getting better at golf. And it all started in September 2008, my first trip to Thailand. And that's why it's relevant for me to stick this in the middle of my Thailand videos. Now my first trip, I went out there, I played six rounds of golf. I was, uh, I think I was an eight handicap. And my best round was an 81. My worst was, I think, about 87. And I was, I was shooting a lot of 84s and 85s. So I was well over my handicap. And at that time, I really thought that I was hot poop. And obviously I wasn't. Because I didn't shoot my handicap. I didn't beat my handicap. So I came back. Now I could have kept my ego intact by just saying, oh, I was too hot, I was jet lagged, and I don't know anything about grainy greens. Not my fault. Ego saved. But I didn't. I had a real good think about what I was doing on that holiday. I relived those six rounds of golf through the autumn, through the winter, through the spring. And I figured out what the hell I was doing wrong. So let me paint you a picture. I was a member of a golf course that had wide fairways. On most of the holes it didn't matter whether you missed left or right. The greens were large and mostly flat. Well, they, they had some borrow on them because they all turned from the hill. But it was a reliable sort of turn. There wasn't, you didn't require much imagination to figure it out. And as a general rule, if there was a bunker or two green side bunkers, they were sat at the front with the green beyond. So as long as you had enough club in your hand to fly the bunkers, it didn't matter if you missed the green left and right. And because the greens were, as I say, reasonably flat, it didn't matter if you were on the front of the green, the middle, the back, the left, the right. So there was no real... There was nothing that you really had to concentrate on. And that was part of the problem. Because it, there was so few demands, I wasn't hitting the damn targets. I wasn't hitting the fairway as often as I needed to. I wasn't hitting the greens as often as I needed to. I couldn't get my handicap down. And yet I hit the ball further than I do now. With the driver, even with a pitching wedge. I had an extra five or 10 yards. And if I really tried hard, I could fire a pitching wedge 125 yards. And this was part of the problem, is that I was trying to knock the cover off the golf ball. I was in my late 30s, early 40s, I was fitter than I am now, I was stronger than I am now, I was faster than I am now, and I wasn't taking advantage of that in any shape or form. So off I go to Thailand, thinking that I was hot poop with my eight handicap, and I simply wasn't. See, the thing out there is there's water, there's sand, a lot of fairway bunkers. All right, I'm not stupid. I figured out that you don't want to go in the water in the fairway bunkers. That's fairly obvious. But if you miss a fairway out there, you've got this tropical grass rough. You've either got the broadleaf, what I call monkey grass, other people call it cow grass, all sorts of manner of things. But it's a thick, leathery, large leaf. When you're in it, there's certainly no way that you can go in there with a five iron and beat it out towards the green. You've got to go in there with loft, and even then, there's no guarantee that you're going to get decent contact. Ball comes out dead. And if you're in the fairway and it's this monkey grass fairway, you quite often get a flyer or a pull because of the way the interaction. And if it's not the monkey grass, then it's Bermuda and other tropical grasses, which are 
very fine bladed grass to retain moisture so they don't lose moisture in the sun. Trouble with that stuff is it doesn't support the golf ball. So if there's any length to the rough of Bermuda rough, the ball sinks to the bottom and again you can't get it out. I'm sure you've seen that on TV with the pros where the ball just disappears into the Bermuda grass rough. So that was two big issues. You miss the fairway and even if the ball is dry and not in the sand, you've got a huge problem getting towards the green. Another issue that I had, even though I thought that I knew a bit about course management, was that you really have to read the greens from 160 yards back. In the very last round of golf, a guy that I was playing with, lovely guy, par five, we've both driven it in the fairway, there's some bunkers down there, so we both lay up. We've got about 115. I take nine iron, I fly over the flag, and it finishes on the back, back fringe. He takes a pitching wedge, and he comes up short. He chips up stone dead, taps in, he's got his par. I'm putting down the hill, down the grain, 20 feet past the flag, and I'm taking a bogey. And at the next drink stop, I talked to him about this. I said, I don't understand why you took a wedge, but it paid off. And he said, you've got to read the greens and their surroundings and the hazards from about 160 yards back. You've got to make your plan about where you want that ball to go to give yourself the easiest chance of getting your par. And that never really occurred to me before. Because the place where I was a member, it didn't bloody matter. So how do you get better at golf? Well, through that winter, I'm a fan of old golf books. And I read a line in a golf book. And it very simply said, take your seven iron swing to your driver, not your driver swing to your seven iron. And there was no explanation about what that meant. That was for the reader to figure out for themselves. So what it's basically saying is that seven iron swing, or eight, or nine, or wedge, the controlled, smooth swing that you have to hit the ball the right direction and the right distance consistently, you take that up the bag you take that up, your four iron, your three iron, your three wood, your driver. You don't go trying to smash these clubs. You've got to be smooth. Very, very smooth. You do that. There's a few things that happen. Firstly, you're not gripping the hell out of the golf club. So your forearms aren't getting tight and pumped up. So your wrists work correctly. And as you're smooth up and you're smooth down, what happens then is that you actually get speed at the golf ball, not speed from up here. And you'll see that with, an, with my golf swing with the driver. You'll see that it's smooth, what happens is you get you use the middle of the club where you get the maximum distance and you get acceleration at the golf ball. That is so important to say that. I see so many people trying to knock the cover off the golf ball and they're over there and they're over there and they're over there. You'll see. I don't lose golf balls. As a general rule, having said that, I've drowned one on a Sunday with a card in my hand, twice on 17. Just hitting little pushes at the moment, perhaps I'm not aligned correctly. But you take that smooth swing to your driver and all of a sudden you start finding more fairways. 
Now the best thing for this, the best thing to work this out, is a nice little drill and it's called seven iron feet together. And you take a two thirds kind of like swing and a two thirds follow through. Maybe three quarters at a push. And you, put over, you devote most of your practice to this smooth seven iron feet together swing. You start finding the middle of the bat you start finding the acceleration at the golf ball and you start finding fairways. Now if you take that to all your clubs, especially your scoring clubs, what you find is your dispersion gets tighter, your distance control front to back gets shorter and you start hitting the ball more often in the vicinity of where that little thing with a flag on top sits. Now the shortest par 3 at Lillybrook is 143 yards and I'm very happy smoothing in a 7 iron. If the wind's correct I'll hit an 8. But I see lots of young men with 16, 17, 18 handicapped swinging out of their shoes to hit a 52 that far. What is their consistency? It's zero. They hit it fat, they knife it they pull it, they block it, they're in bunkers, they're short of the green, they're on the green, they're off the back of the green. They're all over the place except the green and the flag. I can hit 7-iron into that green quite happily. A nice little smooth one. I put myself pin high. If the flag's at the, towards the front or there's a bit of wind helping, then I can smooth the 8-iron in there. And everything's talking about smooth, no jerking. Perhaps that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. If you're trying to knock the cover off the ball with a short iron, well, I'm going to beat you every time we play against one another. I'll beat you every time. I'll hit my seven iron closer than you can hit your pitching wedge, I'll tell you that. And when you're really on it, when the, t the smooth and the timing is absolutely right there, look what I did at Lock Palm. And if you haven't seen the third Lock Palm video, you should go and watch that Lock Palm video and you tell me how many times I hit the golf ball. Now I will add one little caveat to that. You read Jack Nicholas's or uh, biography, autobiography, which is which is the right way. Anyway, the book he wrote himself. In there, he says that he would only hit his driver hard if there was a reward at the end of it, like a par five he can reach into, or a wide, long par four where going into the green with a six iron instead of a four iron was desirable. So that's what I do. This is my game plan. Smooth with every club in the bag, except when there's a reward at the end of it. Like on a par five, where I'm going to hit, if it's wide enough, I'm going to hit the driver a little bit harder. And if necessary, I'll try and hit the three wood a little bit harder. But if there's enough hazards to make me cautious, then I won't. So that's how you get better at golf. How you find more fairways, you find more greens, and how you find more flags. Now the other bit is putting. I don't practice my putting a huge amount. I practice four footers from all round the hole, so I'm getting different borrows. But the, one of the things that I really learnt in Thailand that first time, especially about putting, was the way the caddy would give you a line. And you would focus in on that spot that she's given you. Even if it's wrong, you're focusing in on one blade of grass. And I certainly improved the amount of times that I hole out from scorable range not 30 footers, 45 footers, 
I'm talking about scoreable range inside 15 feet. I hold more of those than I ever did before. Even though I thought I was a good putter. You see, here, there's no grain. We don't tend to have the big slopes that you get in Thailand on some of the greens. And nobody's telling you where to aim. Or whether it's up, down or medium. Of course, when they're talking about up and down and medium, they're talking about the speed of the putt with the grain. So it's down, it's down grain. If it's up, it's into the grain. If it's medium, then it's kind of like across the grain so the speed isn't going to be affected. Here, if, you, if you're sat on a 12 foot putt for bird and you're in your mind going, looking at it and going, hmm, yeah, it's, it's a bit outside the left or it's a bit outside the right. Where do you aim? Where on earth do you aim if you're thinking, oh, it's, it's a bit outside the right, maybe a cup, maybe a cup and a half, not sure. That's just far, far too vague. You know, for you to get that ball in the hole, you need the tunnel vision that leads to one blade of grass. And that is something that Thailand taught me, was to focus in really, really tight, to pick my spot, to aim at my spot, and put my whole thought in hitting the ball to that spot. You just can't do it with wishy-washy, oh, it's somewhere outside the left. It might go in, it might not. That doesn't work. That doesn't work at all. So, nothing particularly original there. Nothing particularly original. Stop trying to hit the cover off the golf ball. Find that smooth swing, seven iron, feet together. Make your long game practice about seven iron, feet together. Not now. Not maybe. Ne Do it as your normal routine every time you practice. You go up to the range, you get a bucket of a hundred balls, you hit half a dozen as a bit of a loosener and stretch and then put 60 balls down and hit 60 balls seven iron feet together. Don't worry about how far it goes. Try and find that smooth swing. Do everything smooth. You gotta be smooth guys. And the strange thing is seven iron feet together, two thirds, three quarter golf swing max. And you start and slow down to the golf ball and you build speed. You ping it off the middle of the face and you're thinking, my goodness, that's going as far as when I put my feet full shoulder width and I'm trying to knock the cover off the ball. It's because you're using the middle because you've got that acceleration at the golf ball. Short irons. Scoring irons. For me, six iron down. Smooth. Bring that dispersion in. I mean, you may have noticed it um, in one of my lessons on the countdown to Thailand or road to Thailand, whatever I called it. And when we looked at the dispersion, all those seven irons were like this. They weren't like this. Apart from one pull, they were all like this. Smooth. You can't play golf from the jungle. You can't play golf trying to knock the cover off the ball. You just can't. Not if you're desperate to improve. And I was desperate to improve. And that's why I spent autumn, winter, spring, analysing six rounds of golf and where it all went wrong. One more thing I will throw in at you. One mistake that I see quite often. Par fives and short par fours. Where people leave themselves the wrong yardage. 
And you will have seen it in these golf videos that I've made in Thailand where I've made a mistake and I've left myself 57 yards, which is a shot that I don't practice very much. Because quite frankly, there isn't enough hours in the day to practice every shot, every yardage. So when you're on a par five that you can't reach into, or you're on a shortish par four, and there's hazards down there, just ask yourself one question. What yardage do I want into this green? And if, it, if you hit your sandwich, say, 75 yards or 80 yards, leave yourself 75 or 80 yards. Don't leave yourself 57 yards. Now, I know there'll be people who will disagree with everything I've said. And I don't mind, because I'm talking about how I learned to be the best I can be. Are you going to say, well, Simon, you're not perfect. You're six handicap, almost a five. Probably get the five in the next couple of weeks, I hope, with one more decent round with a card in my hand. You're not a scratch golfer. You're not plus two. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, this guy here in front of this camera is... I'm shrinking now as I'm getting older. But I'm about five foot five, five foot six. I got short arms, so I don't have long levers to hit the ball a long way. I got little ladies' hands, because my mum was only five foot tall and she was very, very small, very tiny. So I got ladies' hands. I think I punch above my weight. You know, five, six handicap, age 57, with a knackered back and a knackered neck, and my physical capabilities, I think I've maximized what I am capable of doing. And you can maximize what you are capable of doing. If you're a young man who's six foot two, you've got broad shoulders, you've got a supple body, you've got speed, then obviously your target is somewhat lower than mine. But I want to tell you about one word that I have not used in any of this. And that's slow. Nobody's saying that you should do this slowly, that you should swing slowly. You should swing smoothly. If you're a sort of like 96, 98 mile an hour drive a club head speed, like me, or even if you're somewhat senior, and, and you're only 90 miles an hour. <coughs> you know, you get the speed that you can possibly get. But you do it smoothly. If you're 115 miles an hour, a bit like the, the guy I played with today who shot a wonderful 69 round Lillybrook, you know, he's got speed. He really does have speed. But he was so smooth. You should have seen it. It was like butter, that golf swing. There was no hit in it whatsoever. Even when he was hitting his four iron, the same distance as I was hitting my uh, five wood, I think. So he was hitting, he was hitting his four iron about 210. It was smooth. There was, there was no hit there at all. It was just it was just a thing of beauty. I'm sure that he can hit that a lot further. He can hit his driver a lot further. But he doesn't. He hits his smooths. And he hits fairway. And that's what we should be aiming to do. To get better. Smooth. Read the green from 160 yards out. Now one thing I will say about that, obviously you don't want to miss a green on the wrong side. That gives you an awkward chip. But equally, I don't think that you should be aiming to miss a green anyway. 
I think you should be looking in here that you are going to hit target. My target may well be 25 feet left of a flag or 25 feet right of a flag. I don't think I should be attempting to miss the damn green. Although sometimes if there are sufficient hazards, water and sand, then missing the green perhaps is the best thing to do. But that's not something that we suffer from here in England. You don't tend to get water right next to a green really tight, unless it's the 17th at Lillybrook. I said to the guys today, you know, I had a double bogey on the 17th today. I didn't lose my ball. I know exactly where it is. It's just going to be awkward getting it back, though. So comment below. Tell me what you think. What would you do to become the best you can be? What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to change? Now, the changes I made were mostly in here. I changed the way I approached a golf hole in here. The mechanics was simply stop trying to knock the cover off the ball. When you get it right, you shoot a 69 a lot of power. So tell us what you think. You know, I learned a couple of things from reading old golf books. Perhaps I can learn a couple more things from reading your comments. And don't forget to subscribe. I don't ask this very often, but, you know, press that button. Doesn't cost anything. You've got nothing to lose. Maybe you'll get better at golf. Cheerio.